it's Joe and Lisa with Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to the channel. We want to thank everyone for subscribing and giving us your thumbs up and all your comments. I'm going to go through a little cell phone Q&A today. Our last uh, video generated a lot of questions about cell phones. So we want to answer them and do our best to cure your, uh, cure your ails. <laughs> now, we, we can't be all knowing about this and things change in this country. So forgive us if some of the information we give you by the time you get here may not be quite correct because that does happen. A lot has changed since we got here. Boy, a lot. So the number one question, can we bring a cell phone from the U.S. to Ecuador? Yeah, and that question is yes, you absolutely can um, if it's unlocked. So if it's not unlocked, you won't be able to put the uh, Ecuador SIM card in there, the little teeny tiny SIM card. So it needs to be unlocked. And that's what we did is I bought a... Uh, a little Motorola um, in, uh, in the U.S. before we came here. And, um, you know, I didn't pay very much money for it, but it was unlocked. Got here, shoved a chip in it, no big deal. Went on about our way. Been using it ever since. So, um, you know, there are some, um, some things about bringing cell phones. So you got to be careful how many you try to bring. If you have a new one in a box in your suitcase, they're probably gonna stop you and charge the aduana or, or the tax. Uh, it's an import tax. It could be as much as $300 depending on the phone. Well, I will say that goes for all electronics. So cell phones aren't unique there. If you're bringing in more than your personal use, they're probably gonna charge you an import fee. Yeah, so you gotta be very careful about that. We, um, we split all our electronics up into different suitcases and stuff and carry-ons and what have you, so it didn't look quite as suspicious. But we brought, I think, three laptops, um, three tablets, uh, three cell phones maybe, or two cell phones anyway. Yeah. So it was quite a bit of stuff, but we got things in, change. Yeah. We didn't have issues getting into Ecuador with those things. We had issues getting out of the U.S. with those things. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, definitely we, spread them around in your, in your carry-on bags, and um, so that way they don't pick on you quite so much. Yeah, yeah. You know, usually when you're coming into, if you're coming into the Quito airport, you're coming in at 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning, and, you know, they're not paying that close attention to things. But I do know people that have been stopped and asked questions and had to pay import tax on some car parts or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I will say that recently someone told me they tried to ship in some, uh, some seeds for plants through one of our shipping services here, and those seeds were confiscated. I brought seeds in my luggage in November when we went to Texas, mm -hmm. and so I brought those back with me from Texas, no problem at all. Blew right through uh, immigrations and customs without a problem. Yeah, yeah, I think it just depends, like anywhere in the world, depends on who's in charge on that day. Yeah. Question two, what was the next one? The next one is, do you need to register your cell phone? Yeah, so it looks like that's where it's gone. Um, since we've been here, this has come up. Now, we've not had to go back and register our cell phones. Um, but, so, yes, many people are having to register cell phones. There's a government site. Uh, government is called Arcotel. And so there's a site. I'm going to list that site right up here in the description box or down below in the description box. <laughs> and so um, you can go on that site from wherever you live Type in your IMEI number, and uh, it'll even tell you where to find your IMEI number. And so type in that number and the information, and it'll come back and tell you, you know, your cell phone's okay, or you're going to have to pay some tax. So if you just show up with your cell phone and you put a chip in it from Ecuador, what's probably going to happen is that you're going to get a notice uh, from the government on your cell phone. They're going to say, hey, you have to go register your cell phone on this site or we're going to shut you off in 30 days. So um, that's a good thing to try in advance, make sure it's going to be okay. If it's a cell phone they sell here in Ecuador, um, it shouldn't be a problem at all. Uh, my friend Santiago, as many of you have seen Santiago, um, he brought one recently from Peru. He got that very message. He went on the site and registered it. They came back and said, no, that phone's not sold in Ecuador. Well, he had to go and he had to get a, a statement from a cell phone company here in Ecuador that says, yes, it is sold here. And so the difference was is 
that many gigabytes, I guess, on his phone. Mm -hmm. How much RAM was a little different. Anyway, they allowed it. He didn't have to pay any tax on it. Another friend of mine claims he had to pay tax on a cell phone, 130 bucks or something like that. So we expect that that might be the case. Well, that levels out the pricing between phones in Ecuador versus buying it somewhere else and bringing it in. If you're gonna get taxed on it anyway, it's really easy to buy them here in Ecuador. Yeah, and you know, the import tax is typically 30%. Doesn't mean they're gonna charge you 30% on one, but it could be, it could be. So um, yeah, so go on the website, check it out, register your phone. One of the things that that's for is each phone's IMEI number is unique. So there's a big international registry database, I guess, of stolen phones. So they can, at that point, detect whether or not your phone is stolen. Um, and that's one of the reasons for that, I guess. Or they can find you anywhere you are. Yeah. Okay, will I be able to use Google services on my cell phone in Ecuador? Absolutely, yes. Um, so we use everything that we ever use in the States, we can use here. Mm -hmm. um, we use Google Play, Google App Store, whatever you want to call it. Um, we use Google Maps here all the time. Um, there's nothing that I've not been able to access. Internet is Internet, no matter Internet's where you internet. are. Internet, that's right. As long as you got Internet access here, you're going to be able to access those things on your cell phone. Right. How much does it cost to use a cell phone service? Well, okay, this is a really loaded question. So supposedly if you buy a, a plan, it's cheaper. Um, we would kind of argue that. We bought a plan when we first came to Ecuador from one of the major, you know, we've said there's really only three, but one of the major ones. Um, and so uh, it was like, I don't know, $39 a month. Yeah. We got 20 minutes free calling every month to the U.S. And we, um, you know, it came with some internet and that, et cetera. So the problem is at the end of the month, if you had any minutes left, those get wiped out and the new month starts. So your minutes do not carry over. So if you didn't use very many minutes, that's not a very good deal. Well, and once you get here, everybody uses WhatsApp, which doesn't consume minutes or Telegram doesn't consume minutes. So you don't have to use that much of your phone minutes. Well, actually, it doesn't consume minutes as long as you're on Wi-Fi. That's true. So make sure that you're on Wi-Fi. And one of the statements yeah. I was going to make about Wi-Fi is what everyone does here is, is they buy minutes and not a plan because mm -hmm. the minutes are so cheap. I mean, it's 15 cents a minute, basically. Um, you might get a little cheaper when they run these specials or it's 50 cents per minute international calling. So um, we, whatever restaurant we go to, whatever tienda we're at, you always ask for their Wi-Fi and their password, store that in your phone. So wherever you go, you've got internet and that will prevent one, outages, right. um, and two, using up your cell phone minutes for doing WhatsApp or internet searches or things like right. that. Mm -hmm. So I think for us, we use between $10 and $15 a month each? Oh, I don't, I don't use that much. <laughs> she does, I do. <laughs> yeah, he's the talker. Well, and I, I do a lot of internet searches when I'm on the go too. Yeah. So, you know, we do that from our house on our, on our with a credit card. You know, we have a Banco de Loja credit card, uh, debit card, I should say. And we do that, it takes Lisa just a minute to make that happen. Yeah. Or we can go into the tienda there in Vilcabamba on the square, hand them $10 in our phone number and they add it and few seconds it's credited. Yep. So um, tw 20 has a really nice app on, on our phone. Mm -hmm. You can s tell exactly how many minutes you have left of data or cell phone minutes or whatever it is. And so uh, the app is there and you know exactly where you're at all the time. Neat little app, I'll say. Well, and if you're traveling backwards and forth, so a lot of people are in limbo still and they're coming to visit and check things out. If your phone has the opportunity to have two different chips in it, when you land here, as long as you have an open phone, you can buy a little $5.20 chip and have a local number that you can use here, and, but you don't lose what you have with the U.S. You can still get your information from the U.S. Yeah, dual SIM phone is, is probably a good thing to have. Uh, mine is not, my old Motorola is not. But um, Lisa's right, the $5 chip 
and, and that makes everything free for the first month. That's right. So all your minutes are going to be free, your WhatsApp time, etc. cetera. Um, after that, you'll have to add minutes once the month is up. And, you know, $5, $10 will add a lot of minutes, and you'll be in pretty good shape. Yeah. <laughs> so I do think that, um, you know, you need to consider um, the fact that if you're going to have a keep your U.S. number, if you're moving here, um, when we came for a visit, I did a uh, thing. I had AT&T in the U.S., and so I did this travel plan they had. It cost me 60 bucks for one month in yeah. addition to my normal plan rate. Well, and somebody recently did one of those to be able to, because they're in limbo and they were going to try to keep their U.S. information, and they did the travel plan, but like WhatsApp wasn't working correctly. And so they had a lot of problems here on the ground. So if there's any way you can, even if you have to take your chip out and put a 20 chip in so you have access here, that's going to be a better way to go. We did. We have the same problem when we go back to the U.S. is that it's hard to use our phone over there because the cell phone services obviously aren't working over there. Well, when you come from the U.S. over here, they don't work that well either. And, you know, there's a, a place in the airport now where if you're traveling from here to the U.S., you can buy a chip and uh, for, you know, a few dollars and plug it in so you'll have a U.S. number and be mm -hmm. able to dial. We should have done that last time, but we're only going to be there four days, yeah. so we didn't do it. So uh, there goes the dog again. She's doing her job. <laughs> so, yeah, so I recommend... Uh, you know, not getting a travel plan, but rather buying a 20 chip when you get here. A lot cheaper. A lot cheaper. How much do cell phones cost in Ecuador? Another big question. So um, I'm going to list above, and you'll see in the video here, I've got some pictures of some prices of some different cell phones. Um, iPhones are available here. Samsungs are available here. Asus phones, the Zomi um, Right now, we're filming on the Zomi Poco F3 camera. Um, so all of our videos are done on this. We, we use a very inexpensive camera for this. Works great. Great camera. We love the phone. The phone works great. I used it in the U.S. And, uh, you know, talked on it, dialed on it. All, everything on it works really, really good. And it's about $320 on MercadoLibre.com.ec. So if you're um, not used to Mercado Libre, when you come here, get used to it. Um, it's kind of like a somewhat a Craigslist of, not Craigslist, but... Amazon more, of Ecuador. Yeah, Amazon of Ecuador kind of thing. eBay type thing. eBay, yeah. So there's all these sellers in Ecuador, and they have all these products. And um, so they sell them on Mercado Libre. And the thing that you want to do on there is make sure you're dealing with a gold seller, um, someone who's reliable. There are some people on there that will keep your money, and uh, so you need to be pretty well aware of who you're dealing with. It's, it's probably not a bad idea to have a Spanish-speaking person call and do the ordering for you the first time to kind of, you know, make sure that you're comfortable with the process. Make sure you know what you're buying before you press the order button because yeah. they won't refund your money if you order the wrong thing. Yeah, with that said, when Mom went to get her phone... Um, we got her a phone here in Ecuador, and there are almost as many cell phone stores as there are pharmacies. There's like a couple on every block. Yeah. Um, we went into a cell phone store with a friend of ours, and um, we didn't have any problems. She got a phone, and when when I was looking at them, uh, for her, they were between, you know, 150 on up. So it just depends on what you need. Yeah, I think she got a Samsung A7 or something like that. Yeah, something like that. And uh, so, um, you know, here in Vilcabamba, Nacho Cell, we recommend Nacho highly. He does a good job. Mm -hmm. His prices are reasonable. And um, there's probably one or two other places you could buy a cell phone here in Vilcabamba. His prices are reasonable, but he is very knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable. And he'll set you up with the right phone. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and in Loja, there's cell phone stores every 50 meters, it seems yeah, like. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Um, yeah, they're everywhere. Everyone sells cell phones here. So don't be alarmed. There's lots of things to choose from here. Mm -hmm. If you want to bring the latest, greatest iPhone, that's great. Um, you can even order the latest, greatest Zomi phone that's like $1,200. 
It's expensive in the U.S. and it's expensive here, but you can get it here. Yeah, and so far as keeping your number, we when we came, we were not able to keep our U.S. phone numbers. We kept it around for several months until we transitioned into a new phone, but then we we just migrated everybody over to our new phone numbers. Yeah. So you know, I mean, we have some um, we have some some opinions about it, and our opinion is, you know, if you're going to live in this country, uh, let's just commit to it and get integrated. Buy your stuff here, bite the bullet. You know, if it's a few dollars more, um, at least they'll service it here. If you bring something from the U.S., they may not want to do much about it. Um, there are people here like Nacho who will fix your cell phone, mm -hmm. and uh, some of them are not going to be worth repairing. Uh, I would say when we looked at things, and still when we look at things of buying it in the U.S. and shipping it in, the cost of shipping it in, um, versus buying something here, uh, a lot of times it's the price is pretty equivalent. And yeah. I will say both of our main phones are from the U.S. They, we bought unlocked phones when we came um, because we didn't know that we could buy so many different phones here on the ground. That's right. And I think, you know, um, when we first moved to Ecuador, there was a lot of things that weren't available here. And yeah. so we used Amazon quite a bit. We rarely ever use it. Once in a while, we ask someone to bring something in their suitcase for us. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there's one or two little things I wouldn't mind having right now. Mm -hmm. But um, for the most part, all these things that didn't used to be available in Ecuador are now available here. They are. The spices are coming to Super Maxi in the big giant jars that we like. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, there's a lot of things that are now available here that weren't when we first came. Cast iron cookware. Cast iron cookware. We couldn't get it when we first got here or where it was a really low quality cast iron. Um, every now and then they get shipments in, and when, when you see them, buy them because they may not be there again for another year or two. Yeah. But. And you're not going to see the great big displays of the lodge cookware, but, mm -hmm. um, but there will be some cast iron cookware. Mm -hmm. So cell phones, there's a lot of variety here. Um, I, I wouldn't bring one in a suitcase from the U.S. today because, you know, I bought the Poco F3 from yeah. um, Mercado Libre. It works great. I'm not a cell phone aficionado. I don't need any super extra special features. This phone is loaded with more features than I could ever possibly use. And it has three cameras on it. Um, works great. So that's, um, I think we pretty much answered all the questions. Did we miss anything? I think that's, that's everything. But if we that's... missed anything, let us know. Let us know. We'll do our best to find out the information. Um, again, some of this information, it, it's great to come on an exploratory trip here mm -hmm. and ask these kind of questions while you're here of other people. That way, you know, you get more than one opinion on it. Um, yeah. I would caution you, things change all the time. Yeah, please don't just pack up and move if you've never been here. <laughs> Definitely do an exploratory tri trip. Bring your phone, see if it works. Try things out and just get really good information on the ground because it's different in all the little um, cities and towns. It's going to be a little bit different. So definitely do a trip and, and check things out. And don't come to one place. I mean, when we came... We went to a couple of different places and checked them out, not for a long time. We did like three days a piece, but it really helps you because the climate is so different in every little place you go to. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, we, we just had a person stay here for 30 days and um, they felt like they didn't see enough in 30 days. Um, but I think in a couple of weeks, you can probably figure out whether or not this country is going to work for you. Yeah. And in cell phone coverage here, you know, um, the question was asked, uh, does the entire country have cell phone coverage? Well, for the most part, yes. But, you know, there's the deepest regions of the Amazon. No. Um, well, when you're going, like driving from here to Cuenca and you're going over the Andes Mountains, you don't get any coverage up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, 14,000 feet, it's, it's, you may not get any. Well, most um, people don't. There's not that many people that live at the top. Yeah, and so, so you get, you know, a couple miles further down, mm. plenty of coverage. Yeah. Um, it's not, it's hardly ever an issue for us. Now, as Nacho pointed out in our video uh, about cell phone service, 
that there are places like where Twenty doesn't get a good a, a service. Um, you know, the, the original service we had here in our house, it worked great for the first two years, and then yeah. it quit working. And we called, and we argued, and, you know, and they said, oh, it's your phone, it's your phone. No, I got 15 people standing here. None of the, the phones work. So, yeah, we didn't change until we, we had several people come. And one person was walking around all over the property, and he had perfect coverage. And he had 20, and so we went, okay, well, we want 20 because yeah. we want to be able to speak from here and make calls from here. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we get into Loja, and there's a few sections in Loja where the 20 coverage is not that good. Um, but, you know, as I said, I just go to a tienda that I know about, and I'm on yep. the Internet, and I'm good. There you go. So I can make all my calls. But it's never been a problem. No. No. So I hope that, you know, kind of eases any fears you may have about cell phones. I, I'll say we have a good coverage here as we ever did in Texas. Oh, yeah. On the farm in Texas, there's certain areas. And even here, if I'm way down at the the rabbit pen and doing stuff down there, sometimes I don't get cell phone coverage down there. Down in a hole. <laughs> yeah, it's down in the hole. So it just depends. But for the most part, here, up around the houses where everything is, we don't have any problems. Yeah, so expect, you know, depending on your usage, somewhere around $10, $15 a month is what mm -hmm. you're going to spend on cell phone. If you use 20 I'd be surprised. Most of the people I know here are like $10 a month people. Yeah, I think um, you spend about 20 on average I a do. month. I probably spend 10 every two or three months. Yeah, so it just depends. The nice thing is, is when you don't have a plan at the end of the month, you don't lose your minutes. It carries over. So you can just yeah. keep riding those minutes until you completely run out. Sure. And, you know, when we first came to, one of the things I did for Lisa was we bought a little small old style Nokia, you know, Nokia phone. Not a smartphone. No. You could text on it and you could take pictures with it. 25 bucks new in the box. Yeah. So, um, you know, add minutes to that. We and. We still had that phone around. We loaned it to people who were visiting. Yep. I don't know what we did with it, but it's, it's somewhere. It's still around. So those, you know, those things are available too. If you want to come here, mm -hmm. buy a twenty-five dollar phone and um, shove a chip in it for five dollars for thirty bucks for a month. There yeah. you go. Yeah, there's there's lots of opportunities. Yeah. I will say in Ecuador, there's lots of opportunities for all kinds of things. So. Yep. All right. Well, we hope this answered your questions. We look forward to seeing you on the next one. Ciao for now.